Hey there, cats and kitties. I'm the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video, I'll be discussing my thoughts on episode 8 of the anime series Orange. An episode that carried with it this gravitas, this sense of weight to do with Kakadu. And, you know, it, it was one of those things where as I'm watching this episode, I mean, there's so much that feels good and feels surprising and feels like it answers speculations. Uh, you know, characters like Hagita, Azusa, and Takako all coming to the fore in their support and their friendship and their revelation that each of the three of them, too, has gotten a letter from the future. And yet, all as I'm watching this episode, this, this feeling cannot escape me that something is wrong. Something is affecting Kakadu. Now, they pass it off very much as, you know, he's trying to reach out to Naho. He's trying to get her to hold his hand and all that kind of stuff, but I think there's a lot more of a deeper meaning to what he's actually trying to do. I think it goes beyond this kind of naivete where, you know, each of them has not agreed to actually be dating. They're not sort of exclusive. They're not, uh, you know, seeing each other. And they feel like a lot of the rigmarole, a lot of the drama, a lot of the significance of their profession of love for each other they, they can kind of skirt around the edges by not making it a, a formal thing. And so thus, they will not bring upon each other that much more heartache should something down the line tragic befall either one of them or any of the group of these friends. And I, I really believe this is a specious sort of outlook. Um, not only is it specious in, in the idea that they're, they're kidding themselves. You know, they, they love each other. They made this profession. And they should be, you know, holding each other's hands. They should be affectionate toward each other. They should not be afraid to let themselves be vulnerable with each other, even in the fear of the worst potentially happening, even in the fear of one or the other of them losing one or the other of them. And I really believe that, you know, of course, there's a naivete on both of their parts, Nao and Kakadu respectively, in their summation of this situation. But I also believe it's specious from a storytelling point of view. I believe it's specious in that it's trying to guide the viewer, you know, into believing that is what is actually at stake. That is what actually is going on in the hearts and minds of these characters, when in reality it's a misdirection. You know, like, I, I could not help but think all through watching this episode that Kagaru, for all of his showing himself to be happy with this, you know, race that they want to get him involved in, they want him to be the anchor, uh, you know, sort of the heart and soul of this upcoming meet. And you have all of his friends, you know, wanting to partake in this with him, wanting to take the positions of the other runners and everything and make it a group effort, be there to support him. I truly believe him when he says he's happy about that. But I can't help but feel that there is yet again deeper remorse going on, deeper guilt, perhaps deeper sadness. And it was one of the sort of standout qualities of this episode. The most standout quality to me was this is fixed. Kakuru is going to die. He, he is not going to survive. And it's really about making his life and the lives of his friends that much better because you can easily see in the future incarnations of all of these characters, it's an unspoken regret, but one of their regrets is it took this long for us to become this aware. And especially with him passing out during, you know, running, I mean, it's one of those things that harkens back to one of the earliest speculations. Could he have a sickness? Could he have a disease? Could he have health problems? Might his death, might fate hold in store for him a permanent sort of destruction and might this be a story not about saving his life and making his you know death something that doesn't occur could it be rather that these friends want to be closer friends and they want to be there for each other there's you know they basically had to twist Naho's arm to get her to be honest with them. And the same with Suwa. It took, it, it took both Azusa and Takako sort of teaming up against him and confronting him before he would 
let its hair down and say, look, this is what happened. I got a letter. You, you girls got letters. Tagita got a letter. Everybody has gotten a letter. And by the end, you know, there's a, a significance to that bonding up on the roof where they all put their hands together and they make that vow, we're going to save Kakadu's life. But maybe it's more about saving his happiness and bringing this group of friends closer together. I mean, look at all the time that Suwa and Naho are spending together. Even Suwa's mother is excited about the idea that he's calling Naho, thinking there's probably more going on. Maybe there is. Maybe that is the formation of the relationship to come. Maybe these letters, which Naho, you know, basically makes the case that we shouldn't be so dependent on, and I'm not going to anymore in this episode, she's going to try to, you know, live every step forward without relying on this crutch that is this letter. Maybe these letters only have half-truths and only have so much truth in what past they decide to reveal. Maybe it's not so much about future, the future being changed with everything that they do that the letters purport, but maybe these are more cunning in, you know, how they have been written out. Maybe, in fact, they began with the utmost truth, but as the future events unfold in this present for these characters, perhaps they are purposefully misleading and misdirecting and wanting of these characters to form bonds between themselves in an absence that is perhaps inescapable. You know, the absence of their friend, their loved one, Kakaru. And maybe that is the true heart of the regrets they feel. They're trying to save themselves for their loss that is perhaps inescapable. I mean, these are just some of the things that I was really weighing watching this episode because of all those sequences where Kakaru holds out his hand and, and he has this sad reaction like, why won't she be affectionate toward me? Why won't Naho take my hand? What is wrong? What exactly is wrong with me? What's wrong with her? You know, all of these things are probably going through his mind and you have to understand it from a Japanese cultural point of view where public affection is seen as taboo. And there is, a, you know, a pent-up nervousness, an almost repressive quality in the way Japanese people behave around each other, even when they're married. You know, they do not make overt sort of shows of affection. And then with the youth of, of you know, being in school and being a young woman like Nahu is, people suffer from really hard and harsh anxieties and she has been steadfast in overcoming each obstacle that stands in her way but it's an evolutionary process you can't expect her to just flip a switch and suddenly undo everything she's known from the moment she was consciously aware from her birth this is the way people behave. This is what is normal. For her to break that mold is a very sort of tall hurdle to bound over, to leap across. And yet she's making progress. Each of these characters has been making progress, coming closer and closer together. And that's why I, I really have to wonder if that is not the focus of the journey for these characters. Rather than the saving of Kakaru's life, Maybe it's make what is left of his life as good as it can possibly be and save ourselves from the regret that was there the first time when we didn't try to make him happier, when we didn't forge a bond between ourselves, when we didn't become faster friends, so that our future can be bright for all of us, not just one of us, singularly. And I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I mean, it'll, it'll depend on what happens from here on out. I will definitely be excited to see as the story continues. And, uh, yeah. So otherwise, that'll be pretty much it for me on this. Hope this video finds you well. And I'll catch you all later. Peace.